What's good, y'all boys, man? I'm back with another reaction. This time I got why even Michael Jordan feared Larry Bird's trash talk. Hey, man, I ain't gonna lie. I think everybody feared Larry Bird when it came to trash talk. That boy was different. Even, you know what I'm saying, Michael Jordan the GOAT feared him. But that's what we about to hear about and learn about in this video. So if you're new here, hit that like and sub button. You know what I'm saying? 3K subs on the way. If y'all want me to react to a video of your, you know what I'm saying, of your liking, let me know in the comments, and I'll get straight to it. You feel me? But now hit that sub button. Tune in with me for 1554. If you watch the whole video with me, I appreciate you. You a real one. You know what I'm saying? You support my you support my craft. But now let's get straight to the video. Hit that like and sub button. Let's do it. Here is NBA Hall of Famer James Worthy telling us. I'd much rather guard Michael Jordan than Larry Bird because you have to play the game as a thinker when you're playing him. A huge mm. statement to make, but there is a reason why Michael Jordan himself feels like this about Larry Bird. Enjoy yourself, dog. You, you. Y'all, y'all get the <laughs> first word set out hey, love and respect. Nah. To believe. No. That is a wild relationship. That's how you know they're good pals, though. But nah, this is crazy. A huge statement to make, but there is a reason why Michael Jordan himself feels like this about Larry Bird. Enjoy yourself, dog. You <laughs> Curse words said out of love and respect if you can believe it. As Mike also had a rule for his Bulls teammates. Never, ever trash talk Larry Bird. From Mike himself, quote, Not a single person, not one word, no one talked to Larry Bird. But why mm. was this the rule? Why did the greatest player of all time avoid poking the bear that was Larry? And why did Magic Johnson say this about Bird? You only told me one line in your career. Larry Bird said that there would be another Larry Bird one day. And Larry, there will never, ever be another Larry Bird. Maybe because <laughs> NBA history has forgotten. Do y'all think there will be another Larry Bird ever in the game of basketball? Or is he just so, like, unique and different, like... You know what I'm saying? It could be wannabes. I feel like there's a, yeah, that's the word. I feel like there's a lot of wannabes, but nobody will be like Larry Bird, bro. And how absurdly overpowering and unforgivingly brutal Larry Bird was. What's up, guys? Mike here. And in his first season in the NBA, Larry Bird won Rookie of the Year over Magic Johnson and finished fourth in the MVP voting as the Celtics Dang. went from 29 wins in 1979 without Larry to 61 the very next season. At the time, what? the largest win increase in league history and a mark that still stands at number five. Keep in mind, as a rookie? Bird's famous Hall of Fame wingman in Kevin McHale and Robert Parrish would not join the team until 1981. It is a certainty. Without Larry Bird, there was no Celtics dynasty. To put his league dominance into perspective, after his rookie season in seasons two through nine, Larry was at the very least in the top three of the MVP voting every Dang. single year. He also had three straight MVPs from 1984 to 1986, a level of play so low. Three straight MVPs? That's tough, like, bro, like, I feel like, I feel like everybody was, like, underestimating him, bro, and, like, he just real deal just, like, he real deal just proved, like, bro, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm nasty, you know what I'm saying, he just made himself a legend, bro, he didn't even need y'all help, bro, he just knew, like, he knew his talent, and he just, and he just did his shit, you know what I'm saying, he talked his shit, did his shit, and became a legend, that nigga's so, bro, he's so legendary, like, bro, if I see if I see a uh, Larry Bird wristlet in the motherfucking gumball machine, and it's like it's like like twelve quarters, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go get three dollars. I'm gonna exchange it all for quarters, and I'm gonna keep putting a quarter in the machine and twisting that motherfucker till I get the Larry Bird br bracelet. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how legendary he is, bro. As a grown ass man, I'm trying to get a a little kid bracelet out of gumball machine. You feel me, like? that I had to check if anyone had matched it and three straight MVPs has only been matched twice. The other two players to do so were Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. All the respect in the world to the guys who got us here, but since the post-merger era, no one has matched Larry Bird's three MVPs in three seasons during That's a time tough. in which Magic Johnson was also in his prime. He was playing chess and everybody else was playing checkers. Larry's third MVP in 1986 would also be followed up with the Celtics third title. In comparison, Michael 
Jordan had three MVPs and three titles in nine seasons. And after Larry would win his third MVP, Magic Johnson would no, look down insane. and realize that he had zero of his own. Yes, Magic would end up winning three MVPs between the years 1987 to 1990, and he would also win an additional two titles during that time period, leaving him in the Bird vs. Magic argument as overall the winner, as to be fair. Overall, he did have a resume that would surpass Larry Bird's. However, we need to remember that Larry Bird's career and prime was cut short due to a back injury that was so severe that doctors had to unlock his spine as it had fused into the wrong Duh. place. How did he get that injury? How do you even unlock your spine? Like, bro, just imagine he had no back problems. Like, do you think he could have got like another MVP or like a couple more championships? Like, how many more years could he have played? How many years did Larry play? 13, 12? How many years did he play? Somebody told me. I don't remember, bro, but it was like, it was like not that long. It might have been 10. Bro, just imagine if he could have got like five more seasons. Oh my. <laughs> Larry, bro. Building and paving his mother's driveway in the summer of 1985 when he was an NBA superstar. Why would he do this during his apex prime? We're going to get into that. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank Ada. Hey, 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 no sponsors, my boy. No sponsors. And if you not paying me, no sponsors. Destroy him. From the Appreciate ages of the video, 27 though. to 31, Larry Bird averaged 27.3 points, 9.8 rebounds. Hold on, did y'all hear what they said? They said that he was helping his mother with the driveway, you know what I'm saying, by himself. He got all this money. Like, back then, he had all that money, you know what I'm saying? NBA superstar. He could have easily, I mean, easily got somebody to do it for him. He could have had somebody do it for free, but you know what I'm saying? He could have easily paid that amount of money to get it done, but that's how much of a, like, you know what I'm saying? He like to get the job done by himself, bro, and that's why I fuck with Larry, bro. He's like a different breed. He's not taking handouts. He not, he go, if he can do the shit himself, he's going to do it, you know what I'm saying? That's why I respect him, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't understand, like, when people have the capabilities of doing things, you know what I'm saying, and and, 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 they, and they take it upon themselves to take handle it, I like people that handle their business, you know what I'm saying, they stand on business, and I fuck, that's why a lot of y'all out there, man, y'all be real deal, support my channel, y'all stand on business, y'all y'all commenting, y'all always leaving thanks and all type of stuff, hey, hey, real deal. And 6.8 assists per game on 51% shooting while leading the Celtics to two championships, giving him That's his tough. third overall. This level of productivity was and is unprecedented. Remember, this was a slower era. Bro. My bad, my bad, my bad. And compared to even LeBron James at these ages, Bird's stats still remain supreme as Bron put up 26.3 points, 7.3 rebounds, and 6.8 assists on 53.5% shooting. I'm not trying to knock LeBron's greatness at all. I'm mm. showcasing Larry's. Only Wilt Chamberlain, LeBron, and Russell Westbrook have averaged at least 25 points, 7 rebounds, and 6 assists per game during That's those ages tough, of their whoa. career. This company is tough, though. This is some great company, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's have tough. Averaged at least 25 points, seven rebounds, and six assists per game during those ages of their career. Unfortunately, unlike the other players on this list, Larry's career was not in his hands after the oh my. season. As the year <laughs> the second in the MVP. Bro, I don't know how many times I've seen this clip, but this shit is nasty. Unlike the other players on the this jab? list, Larry's career was not <gasps> in his hands after Got his the ass. 1988 season. As the year after finishing second, Second in the MVP voting at the age of 31. At the age of 32, Bird would only play in six games and would never be the mm. same. Why? Again, he infamously, instead of hiring workers, built his own grandmother's driveway in the summer of 1985. Nah, that's and during crazy. this process, his back slipped out of alignment and locked into unnatural positions, which mm. in the 1980s was a career death sentence. It might be a career death sentence now. In the 1988 playoffs against the Pistons, Bird was hampered by foot injuries and would get surgery on his foot in 1989 after playing six games in excruciating bro pain. that iq is super tough look at the look at the awareness to drop the ball off. On his foot in 1989 after playing six games in excruciating pain it was there that his productivity fell off of a cliff in the saddest way possible watching larry hobble around with a back brace as he still fought to do everything he could to help the celtics win was a testament to the work ethic and unrelenting drive he had fostered but where oh did this drive come goodness. from and why did he trash talk so much michael jordan would say larry bird is 
what? I know we're listening to the guy in the background, bro, but you still gotta like, you still gotta pay attention to the greatness, dude. I know I've been, I've been doing a lot of Michael Jordan uh, videos lately, but I had to come back to the Larry Bird because like that's how interesting it is, like to just hear about this stuff, bro. You know what I'm saying? The driveway, you know what I'm saying? He trying to do his grandma on driveway, you know what I'm saying? Messing up his back, and then we just like it's like crazy. Like even guys like Michael Jordan were telling his own teammates not to talk shit to Larry Bird because he knows what, bro. He knows what happens, bro. Like, this shit is crazy, bro. I've come from, and why Look did he this. trash talk so much? Michael Jordan would say Larry Bird is the greatest trash talker and mind game player of all time. He taught me everything I know about getting in folks' heads. That is a direct quote from Mike, and as we know, the rule during Michael mm. Jordan's time was never talk to Mike. During Michael Jordan's career, he knew Larry Bird both talk the talk and walk the line of friendly banter or trash talk that keeps you up at night. Larry did yeah. not want to just beat you on the court. He wanted to embarrass you. Embarrassment is something all of us avoid. Give me it that. It is something that during Larry Bird's career, NBA stars feared. Six-time All-Star Sean Kemp's first meeting with Bird went like this. Well, first of all, he asked me to jump ball. He said, you the cat that broke all my records in high school, right? And I was like, yeah, that's me. He said, I got to you tonight. Bird would finish with a 40-point triple-double, backing up his talk as was usual for him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, fuck that. Nigga, you gonna break my you gonna break my high school records. I'm dropping a 40 point triple double in your ass. Like what? <laughs> Yo. In the 1987 season, Bird would tell All-Star Xavier McDaniel after a timeout was called with the game on the line. Larry steps in and says, uh, Coach, uh, why don't you just give me the ball and tell everybody to get out of the way? So he tells Xavier, he says, I'm getting the ball. I said, I know I'm going to be waiting. And he said, I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to shoot it right in your face. Five, and Bird has the basketball. Look out. He shot a shot right in my face. He was like, I didn't need to leave two seconds on the clock. That's what it's all about. Larry proceeded to drain a game winning jumper right in Xavier McDaniel's face, right from the spot he said he would before a game around Christmas. Did you see the English on that motherfucker, man? Oh, 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 oh. Did you see the English on that motherfucker, man? Oh, 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 oh. He put some English on that motherfucker. Right in Xavier McDaniel's oh, face, oh, right oh, from oh, the oh, spot oh. he said he would before a game around Christmas. Bird once told Pacers Chuck Person he had a oh, Christmas oh. present for him, then proceeded to drain a three in his face during the game and tell him, Merry Christmas, mother. He'd also tell Per Merry Christmas, motherfucker. <laughs> Bro, how did he not get in more fights, dude? Was they scared he was gonna beat their ass? He probably did. It. <sighs> Yo, this shit is crazy, bro. I fuck with Larry Bird so much, dude. And if the Celtics beat the Pacers in the deciding game five of their playoff matchup in 1991, then if Bird won, Persons would have to mow his grass. To which Persons apparently replied, okay, same bet on my end, only of course, it was Larry Bird who came out on top. There is no report if Persons actually mowed the grass. There were reports that Bird openly said he found it to be an insult if a white player was guarding him. I always tell this people this story about Larry Bird. He was cursing under his breath. And I asked him, I said, Larry, what's going on with you? He says, you guys are being disrespectful to me. He says, it's disrespectful <laughs> when y'all put a white guy on me. Bird walked into the first ever three-point <laughs> contest and told everyone in the locker room who is playing for second. Then he did not take his warm-up jacket off as he flew through the field and earned the trophy. That chick's had my name on it for a week now, and I knew I was going to win this thing. I've been practicing. Larry refused. He basically saying they knew that everybody knew he was gonna win that motherfucker. They already put Larry Bird on that motherfucker a week ago. <laughs> Bro, I need that type of confidence, bro. Shake hands with a rookie, Dominique Wilkins. And Larry put both hands behind his back. He wouldn't shake my hand. In the first play of the game, he said, you don't even belong in the league, Holmes. He said, but I'm still getting 30 on your ass. And later, against that same Atlanta Hawks team in 1985, Bird would score 60 points as the Hawks bench would get fined by their coach Bruh. for cheering him on. Bird has 60 points. Larry Bird That's how you know you're different if the other team's cheering, bro. At the end of this game. He literally said, oh, uh, off the glass into the trainer. 
<laughs> no way. Uh, yeah, and so um, it was a bad night. And of course, the shot went right in. It always seems like I, I get the last word. <laughs> and speaking of three pointers, we haven't even mentioned that Larry is considered one of the greatest shooters ever for good reason. From 1985 to 1988, Larry Bird averaged two and a half three point attempts per game and made 41.4% of those shots, That's which tough. might seem underwhelming. However, in the final season of his prime, 1988, Bird would attempt over three threes a game at a time where NBA teams as a whole averaged, wait for it, just five three-point attempts a game. Larry paved what? the way for the three-point shooting explosion that would come. He was a transcendent player for his time. In the 2024 season currently, Luka Doncic is averaging over 10 three-pointers a game. Playing no, in a three-point era would have opened Larry's game in ways we can't quantify, so we won't play what if here. Instead, let's ask, where did this all come from? Three straight MVPs, three championships with the Celtics, and the ultimate trash talking legend who you could bro, never shake his bro i think his layup package is underestimated bro he's really out there laying that motherfucker like reverse shit like bro like high off the glass what made larry bird develop this persona the answer is a lot of pain and a lot of hardship because why would an nba superstar build a driveway himself during his prime and not just hire someone it might seem absurd to us now only that type of put in the work yourself mindset was instilled in larry at a young age out of necessity born to a poor family in french lake indiana population under 2000 by the seventh grade larry bird was clocking in 40 hours a week at the local market where he Dang. was paid a few dollars and whatever food he could fit into a brown bag to take home. Larry Bird knew hardship, but he never complained. He instead put his head down and worked. His loyalty to his family was so great that his dad had to offer him $20, a huge sum of money for his family, of course, at that time, to get Larry to even try out for the high school basketball team despite Larry's, of course, greatness. It was during high school that Larry's talent shone through as he averaged over 30 points per game and 20 rebounds per game as a high school senior, where he also had the classic growth spurt story. Going from six foot one as a sophomore to over six foot seven by the time he accepted a scholarship to Indiana University to play for the legendary Hall of Fame coach Bob Knight, RIP Bob Knight. This pair Sheesh. seemed destined for greatness, as both Knight and Bird are known for their tremendous basketball IQs only. The harshness of Indiana's system combined with his family obligations had Bird knowing this was not the place for him. In a shocking move to everyone, Larry would never play a single game in Indiana, and the mm. Hoosiers without Bird would go on to win the 1976 NCAA championship. Bird Dang. could have been a part of that famous team, but he instead decided to hitchhike back home to French Lick as he had a newly born daughter to take care of and a dad who would tragically end his life shortly after Larry came back to help the family. Larry would say at this time basketball was his outlet, saying it was his way out, and when Indiana State coach Bill Fitch came back to recruit Larry, he was now ready to rejoin the basketball world and realize his destiny. After years of hardship and struggle, Larry took this pain out on unsuspecting opponents and at Indiana State, he immediately became a superstar, averaging 32.8 points, 13.3 rebounds, 4.4 assists on over 54% oh. shooting in his first college season. In his third and final- that, That's out, that's out, what's the word I'm looking for? That's outlandish. Is that the right word? Bro, what? Dude, this dude is different, bro. Like, his whole backstory, bro, it really, bro, you know how, like, people be having, like, great backstories, and, like, it's, like, crazy. Like, it seems like if you ever ask an NBA all-star superstar, they always got, like, some crazy story. But I feel like out of all the ones I heard, bro, Larry Bird is, like, the most, like, genuine backstory I done heard, like, he really got that shit out the mud, like for real. In a college season, yes, Larry would famously lose to Magic Johnson and the Michigan State Spartans in the most televised college basketball game of all time, a record that still stands. This game would launch the Bird vs. Magic rivalry, and overall that season, despite the loss, Larry had led Indiana State to a 33-1 record as he put up 28.6 points, 14.9 rebounds, 5.5 assists, and 2.5 steals mm. per game. Larry would later say this loss was the hardest of his career Career, and he still finds it hard as when the team returned after losing the title thousands of Indiana State fans greeted them despite the outcome a move that touched Larry to his core and caused him to dedicate the Celtics 1984 championship to the people of Terre Haute Indiana Larry That's never tough. ever forgot where he came from Boston believed in birds so much that they
they actually got the NBA to change the draft rules in 1979, as Red Arback, one of the most important men in basketball history, convinced everyone to allow teams to draft a player who was still playing in college as long as that NBA team signed the player before the next draft. This seemed like an innocent rule change, and one that would benefit the players, only everyone would watch in horror in 1979 as Red used this rule to draft Larry Bird with the sixth pick as the rule was immediately removed but the damage was done. Boston had stolen Larry and they would pay him the largest rookie contract in league history, of course at the time. And we know how mm. the rest of the story goes, the back injury that derailed him. The real question is, what if Larry Bird was never injured? With Bird's injuries, the Detroit Pistons took over the East and Magic Johnson cemented himself as the greatest point guard to ever live. If this Dang. injury had never happened, Bird would have been Michael Jordan's roadblock as in his last healthy season, Larry was second in MVP voting to Michael Jordan as Bird averaged 29.9 points, 9.3. Bro, this nigga averaged 37. Uh, that is crazy, but look at Larry Bird, 28, 9, and 7. That's tough. Max Johnson was eating too, though. I ain't gonna lie, 23, 6, and 12. Damn rebounds, and 6.1 assists per game on almost 53% shooting. It is of course possible the bad boy Pistons still would have taken down the Celtics. So All tough. I know is that they never were able to do it while Larry was healthy. To me, this is similar to when Michael Jordan went and took a break playing baseball. The Houston Rockets stepped in and won two championships only. Larry Bird was never able to return to the player he once was. Except it's here that we again continue to see Larry Bird's true character and his true mindset. Many would have given up basketball immediately as it was feared that playing basketball would cause Larry to not be able to walk. That is how much pain he was in. Despite the injuries, Larry played through this pain. Larry fought and fought and even chose to represent the United States and play on the dream mm. team, dedicating himself to an entire summer of practices and Olympic play. Even though his NBA career was over, he did not play in the 1993 season. That is who Larry Bird is. A <laughs> He just do a fucking I don't need, a reverse dunk. It was over. He did not play in the 1993 season. That is who Larry Bird oh is. My a workhorse, a man whose spirit cannot be broken, and one of the greatest players. We've left hand ever is seen insane. Touch a left hand is insane. The crazy. left hand is insane. The way he got there is a true inspiration to anyone looking to make it out of a travel question. Mark? He didn't complain. He worked as hard as he could, and he never looked back on his way to greatness. So there we have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe and turn on post oh, notifications that way you never miss a video and also i'll be honest it would be really cool to go and hit 2 million subscribers and i would love for you to be a part of that that's if you're tough, already subscribed tough. thank you so much for supporting you are awesome we all know it and as always hey man that's gonna do it hey show some love you know what i'm saying i'm showing y'all love with the consistent reactions every single day you know what i'm saying drop a sub let me get the 3K subs, you know what I'm saying? Then the 5K, then the 10K, then the 100K. I want to get to 100K subs, y'all, you know what I'm saying? So if 100,000 of y'all watch this video, this video right here, if it blow up and hit 100,000, I need 100,000 of y'all to show me love and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your auntie, tell your cousin, tell your little cousin, tell your auntie, your little cousin, son and sister and cousin and shit, you know what I'm saying? Tune into my videos, you know what I'm saying? Real deal. If you want to show, show love and, you know, the little thanks button at the bottom of the screen, you know, you can send a little, send a little gift or a little, little, little tip, you know what I'm saying? Help me out, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get a new setup. We finna go up, you know what I'm saying? Hey, IRL videos and vlogs coming your way. So if you fuck with me personally, let me know in the comments. Would y'all watch my vlogs? Would y'all watch my, you know what I'm saying? Pranks and, and, and travel videos and et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Let me know. Because I know a lot of y'all real deal mess with me. So, hey, let me know what y'all think. And that's going to do it, man. Hit that sub button. We out.